Rub up your engines! While Cadillac claims their Escalade electric vehicle has a 450 mile range. Well, there's only one big problem. They start at $130,000. And even to get that range, that's GM's new Ultium battery, you know, they come up with these buzzwords, right? Well, you gotta charge them with one of those super fast chargers. That's a DC charger. There's not that many of them around, right? Most people, what are they gonna do? They're gonna charge them at home. Now, you can't plug them in your 120 volt at home because if you did a car like this would take three four days to charge up right so you'd have to put in a 220 volt system to charge you at a level two charger right but even with one of those level two charges at your house you're only going to get about 36 miles per hour of charge so that's going to take almost 13 hours to recharge it fully right and if you know anything about batteries, right? These are lithium. They call them ultium. They're still lithium batteries, right? Lithium batteries, it's not a good idea to charge them fast. So if you do take them out, you charge them fast on one of these supercharged, if you can find one that's actually working, and you're in the mode that you can use that particular company's charger, right? It's going to destroy your battery faster over time. You supercharge lithium batteries as fast as you can. Guess what? The stupid things are going to overheat, and they're going to lose their lifespan. They never talk about any of this stuff. Oh, it's got a big range. Oh, la, la. Yeah. How'd you like a car that takes 220 volts it takes like 13 and a half hours to recharge <laughs> I don't think I'd want to be driving one of those things. Well, here's an interesting one from a guy who works for a bus company. David Swoboda says, Hey, Scotty, I work for a California transit system. We purchased some Proterra electric buses last year. They're almost never used, I think because there's electrical and range issues with them. Now I'm reading that Proterra filed for bankruptcy after getting a ton of federal money and millions in debt. I guess even with all that, it wasn't sustainable. Forget about repairs and getting parts now. We have perfectly good CNG buses, but I guess that's not green enough. Before that, we had reliable diesel buses that never broke down. When are people going to get a clue? Yeah. <laughs> and if you've ever followed the news about Proterra, the government subsidized, right? President Joe Biden at one time said Proterra was getting us into the game and he gave them all kinds of money, right? But now they are bankrupt. One of the top executives of Proterra on a White House energy board, right? I mean, they're all, oh, yeah, that's great. Lady. Oops, we went bankrupt. We made crap. It didn't work. Bye. And hilariously enough, the energy secretary, Jennifer Granholm, had hundreds of thousands of shares of it. That, of course, are now worthless because the company has gone bankrupt. Sometimes insider trading doesn't work out. And here's what Proterra said, the bus company. They made the buses that broke all the time. They're electric buses, right? They said, various market and macroeconomic headwinds forced us to go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> headwinds. Maybe they should have made wind turbines instead of talking about headwinds, right? Because their electric buses didn't even work, right? And now the company's bankrupt. People have these stupid buses that they didn't work to begin with. Now they can't get parts. The company's bankrupt. Nobody's going to be buying these companies. Like I said, this is one of these deals where this belief in what they call green isn't going to work out. Now, I do have to say these buses are now very green. They'll just sit there. They don't do anything. Put them out to pasture. Open the doors. Let cows sleep in them or something or chickens or goats, right? I still find it hilarious that Joe Biden said, Proterra is getting us into the game and these companies will end up owning the future. Well, if they do, it's going to be a bankrupt future, man. <laughs> You can't make this stuff up. You know, government waste companies, then they go bankrupt. They don't even build the stuff right. You think, electric buses, okay? Buses are huge. So it's not like building a car where you got to make everything small so it fits in the size of a car and blah, blah, blah. You got a giant bus. A bunch of people go on it. You can put big batteries wherever you want. But they couldn't even do it right. Now they're bankrupt. The government money's down the toilet. And at least one of the government bureaucrats, well, she lost a bunch of money because she had hundreds of thousands of shares of it. So I'm hoping that she bought them and weren't given them by the company. At any rate, Proterra, the beckoning of the future, it's going to be a bankrupt future. That's for sure. DJ Rodden says, I got 2002 Mazda Turbo with code P1170. My friend just bought it with an aftermarket turbo. It idles, has started an issue, and the code reads P1170s. What should I do? All right, well, P1170 means it sees no change in the oxygen sensor data. It doesn't mean it's a bad oxygen sensor. You'd want to pray it is. But what it probably means is the who put the aftermarket turbo kit on that Mazda Miata, screwed 
up. Computer software has to be changed. Everything has to be changed, right? And obviously the guy did it wrong. Your friend should have never bought that 2002 Mazda with an aftermarket turbo. If it didn't run right, he should not have bought the vehicle because now he's in a rat's nest. You're going to have to find a Mazda Miata supercharging, turbocharging expert, if you can find one who's done it and knows exactly what modifications have to be done to the vehicle. Because you can't just bolt on a turbocharger kit and think the stupid thing is going to work right. When they build them in the factory, the engineers design them right, the software is right, the hardware is right. In this case, something has been bolted on and odds are the whole thing was done wrong. Try a new oxygen sensor. Maybe the thing's broken, but I doubt it. Often it trips those codes because something's wrong in the fuel injection and the ignition system, and in this case, the turbocharging system. So it gives wrong data and it just makes the oxygen sensor stay in one framework because either it's running super rich or it's running super lean and it just stays that way the oxygen sensor data is supposed to go up and down and up and down it's probably staying in one part because there's something else wrong with the car sad but true well you've been seeing how bad it can be with offshore wind turbines having problems well it turns out the onshore ones can be just as bad Siemens a big company in Europe is showing all kinds of problems with their onshore turbines here's what they found in Spain are the ones that they put up. They found the onshore wind turbines had more than expected quality flaws. The company has to fix flaws in rotor blades, bearings, ranging from component failures to small cracks, and it's going to cost them billions to fix it. Now this is a 4X and a 5X, which are their most recent, their most modern wind turbines. You think, okay, the old ones, maybe they screwed up, right? Turns out it's the new ones that they screwed up on. And here's what else they found out. Gee, you think they would have tested this stuff first, right? The problems center on the discovery that a main piece of the frame of a wind turbine can move or twist over time, damaging other critical components. Now, there's almost 3,000 of these things out there now, right? Are they going to have to fix them all? And it's the new design. Now, these problems are going to result in, they think, about $5 billion of cost. They're touting this technology. It isn't here. And this is the new ones. Yeah, the old ones, they didn't build them right. The bearings went, the blades went. You think they'd fix it? No, they're making them worse now. Here's what a spokesman for the company says. Jack and I called, said wind turbines were not sufficiently tested. Oh, great. Now they tell you, you know, <laughs> put up 3,000 of these cursed things and then they break. Oh, God, I guess we didn't test them with enough, you know? This technology's got such a long way to go. I pity the ones they're building off of Rhode Island, 65 of them, they're probably going to fall apart before their time, right? And then they're all going to be sitting, what went wrong? Well, I don't understand. This was supposed to save us. Well, in Europe, and England. I don't know if you can count England as Europe. They don't particularly like the Europeans. They've been fighting the French and the Germans for generations. They're saying, help, we need more support. Okay, the costs are spiraling out of control. Those semen ones are breaking more than they should. Even the new generation ones are breaking more. You gotta spend billions to fix them and to retrofit them, right? Well, now they're saying, we, we, we. It's about to say to the British government, we, 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 we need more help. In other words, give us more money for this unproven technology that doesn't work all that well, all right? The problem is, they're getting government money to begin with. They build them and they find out they're falling apart and they're finding out that they're not profitable. In our capitalist society, if you have a business, the business of generating electricity, it is supposed to be profitable, right? The problem with wind and solar is it's just like electric cars. It's become a belief with people, right? And I was reading one of these greenies in Ontario of all places in Canada, right? And the guy was saying, I don't understand why the Ontario government, they keep building these nuclear power plants. Why this, oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, the nuclear power plants actually make the most sense, right? They generate a tremendous amount of electricity. They have a long lifespan of 60 to 90 years, right? These wind things, 10 years later, sometimes five years later, they break. And even the fanciest ones out there, the highest thing they tout is, well, these can last 25 years. Yeah, can. I haven't seen any last 25 years, right? They don't last that long and now they call it well this is a cheaper alternative using wind and solar it may be cheap right in terms of me it's cheap quality right they don't last long they don't generate all that much electricity and now the wind industry as per usual is asking for more government help well we need more help if they're not economically viable forget it everybody needs electricity right we live in a technological society and a lot of the real experts in the world say the problem with the world is we need to get good cheap electricity 
electrical energy for the world right and nukes do that and if you build enough big ones they last so long you can't just say oh we can build these windmills cheaper yeah maybe you can but they don't factor in that the nukes last four to five to six times longer and if you amortize the money over all those years you're gonna find the nukes make a lot more sense than these stupid windmills flying up in the air and breaking all the time they're gonna wear out faster it's just common sense big blades with bearings in them the things are gonna wear out right and they have to have so many have to produce a lot of electricity you take a tiny space where there's nuclear power plant hey they don't take up that much space they make a tremendous amount of power you need tons of windmills and gazillion electric solar panels to create that kind of electricity so it's kind of stupid to go that way but then again we live in a society where people believe in stupid things and once they believe them they just march forward with blinders on they don't see what's happening and then when it all falls apart they sit there i don't understand what happened so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell